After penitence and appeal, federal government talks tough to end SARS protesters. And are the ongoing protests still as peaceful and devoid of external influence? This is Bloss Politics. I am Coyote Ladeindi. Welcome to Plots Politics. Obviously, we wouldn't talk any other thing but the protest. So, reacting to the ongoing protest against the activities of the operatives of the disbanded Special Anti Robbery Squad SARS, the federal government has issued a strong warning to the NSAS protesters. The Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohammed, says the federal government would not allow the country to be thrown into anarchy following the violence that has trailed the NSAS protests. Taking into consideration the happenings that have occurred over the past few hours, a good question to ask is, now, what is the end point of the protest? Joining us to discuss this is Mr. Dele Farutimi, a legal practitioner, and Greg Ogiogwa, a political scientist. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening, darling. Good evening, Mr. Greg. How are you doing? I'm okay, very let, well, sir. Thank let, you. Let me just put it on record. Mr. Delivery Timmy is here with us in Lagos, and Mr. Greg Ogiogwa is in Edo State, where we had that. Uh, let's start with you, Mr. Greg. What exactly happened in Edo State, and what in. I'm trying to phantom what could have led to that kind of uh, incident where we had jailbreak in two different places. Can you please explain to us? Okay, uh, first thing. Both jailbreaks were in the same city, Benin. One on Sapley Road, one on Airport Road. One was the minimum security prison at uh, Sapley Road. The other one was maximum security at Oko Prison. And to put it in proper perspective, at every single major riot in Nigeria since 1990, since 1980 something, we've always had uh, jailbreaks. Uh, the uh, IBD must go. In 92, we had jailbreaks in those prisons. In 1994, um, uh, you know, there was SARS riots as well, same thing. And then uh, um, June 12 riots, same thing. So it is obvious that um, the judicial, I mean, sorry, the correctional institution, because don't let's call them prisons any longer, the correctional institution, even their location, are questionable. Putting um, Correctional institutions in the heart of a metropolis or a city, when you know that situations like this can happen, is not even in the first instance the best thing to do. Now, what happened in Edo, it would be wrong to say that it was the protesters who engineered the jailbreak. Because from the moment you move from the protest ground to the prison to try and gain access illegally into the prison, you are no longer a protester. You are a criminal. You are a jailbreaker. You are uh, uh, a hoodlum. And you are aiding and, and, and abetting the commission of uh, major crime. So, to uh, describe those who, uh, or in whichever form or manner, took part in the jailbreak is to say that protesting is criminal, or that protesters are criminal, and that's not necessarily true. You okay. had criminals, because the people who went there, you could see that they were carrying AK-47s, machetes, and so on. Those guys are not, were not protesters. Now, don't forget that if you are an armed robber and you have a colleague who is in jail, awaiting trial for an armed robbery uh, 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 case, and you have the opportunity under the guise of uh, protest to go and free your colleague, you do so. If you are a cultist and you have members of your court who are held in detention, and who, under the guise of uh, protest, you can go and free, they will do so. Okay. And these people, not only that, if you see the videos, it is obvious that the prison break was not necessarily engineered from the outside. Okay. They must have had some inside complicity. Greg. So let us situate this where it really belongs. 
I'm not saying blame protesters. Protesters are protesting for fundamental human rights. Criminals are the ones breaking prisons and okay. looting. Greg, uh, you will do me a favor from time to time. I will want to be uh, interjecting so that we can have a smooth convers conversation. Mr. Dele Farutibi, let's look at um, the statement credited to Minister of uh, Information. It said this at the instance of what happened in Oshun State when he said we would not fold our hands and allow this country to be thrown into anarchy. Uh, this has been a government who we've seen apology, we've seen, in quote, quick response to some of the demands uh, of these protesters. Is it wrong to use this carrot and stick approach that the government seems to be sending across? <laughs> Let me say this. If you sit on a man's back, riding him and making him carry you, as Leo Tolstoy said, and you say unto the man, I would love to get rid of your pain. In actual fact, there is nothing I would enjoy more than to let your pain go away. However, I'm not going to get off your back. I'll give you Panadol. You might even have some paracetamol, but I just ain't getting off your back. We are in a very funny situation, funny if it were not so tragic. And I'm going to take my time to try as much as possible. Since I'm the one who looks like a madman, but they are the ones behaving like madmen, let me just break this down for you so that we're clear. Mr. Lai Mohammed is speaking for his class, the beneficiary of the order that the young men and women on our streets have announced their hand. So I don't expect him to applaud anything done by the young men and women who are demanding an hand to the decimation of their lives. But when you hear men who are so divorced from reality that they presume to read riot acts to men who have more or less been told that their lives are worthless and who are demanding a recognition of their humanity, then you begin to understand just how far divorced our rulers have from the people themselves. Let us be clear. The protesters have never embraced violence. I don't know who organized this, but I am proud of them. I applaud them. I've been out there. I've gone right, I've listened to them, I've seen them. We know exactly who is engineering the violence we are seeing all over the country. And you know it too as press men. The fourth estate of the realm has a duty to speak the truth. And here are some truths. You can dispute them or deny them as you may care. The people who attack protesters in Lagos, in the full glare of the camera, had state support. It was not the protesters who brought them in state buses. The ones who are attacking people in Abuja had police support. They came under the cover of police. And there are videos readily available that everybody has watched online. So let's be clear, when we are talking violence in this particular protest, let us properly situate it. The monopolist of violence has been the Nigerian state. And it has shown very clearly that there are really no lines between the state and the criminal elements in the state. If I don't know what happened in Pini, I know what happened in Lagos. It's out there for all to see. If I don't know happened, what happened in Bini, I know exactly what happened in Abuja. Everybody saw it. The cameras are there. The videos are all over the place. Miscreant guided by policemen to attack protesters. So let us properly situate these things and not buy into the lies. And let's be clear, lies that the government... Mr. Lai Mohammed is famous for telling lies. But this is one lie he must not be allowed okay. to get away with. Mr. The Dele, protesters are not the violent ones. If Mr. he has Dele, a riot, 
Mr. Dele, I, I, I'm not trying to gag you. I'm just saying that uh, you, you know better. You are a lawyer. But when we make allegation, probably we, it might be better to take it to the court of law so that we, put, we situate it properly. I, I'm, this is no, just my piece of advice. Of law, if as I a journalist. Mr. Lai Mohammed has the instrumentality of the state, I might be charged for lying against him. There are sufficient video evidences to portray what I have told you. So for him to come out and start talking, reading riot, presuming to read riot acts, the question is, do we as citizens have a right to protest? Do we? We do. Now, if we do, do we have a right to expect the protection of the police that is paid with our taxes? How do you explain the fact that miscreants were brought to attack protesters with government buses? These are facts. These are not suppositions. How do you explain the fact that in Oshogbo, the governor came out and said he was attacked by political thugs, but Very the true. narrative is being molded as though it were the honest protesters that attacked him. Let us be clear. Okay. It is either the Nigerian state is telling us to Mr. Lai Mohammed that we do not have any right to protest without them threatening us with police, threatening us with army, and when they cannot do those, sponsoring talks. Is the state we are talking about for heaven's sake, and they are ashamed? Mr. So Mr. Please, Mr. Farrow, no. I promise, I promise I will allow you finish your thoughts, but I'm coming back to some of the issues you've raised because there's a bit of um, uh, um, um, ambiguity that I would seek clarity on. I promise you I will allow you to do that. But let me go to Edo State. Now, uh, that of Edo State, you've also given us a very lucid uh, picture of what happened. But our worry is what would you advise the protesters at this time to do since it is a clear case of hijack. Mr. Gray. So, I mean, it is a clear case of hijack. Where is the clear case? One of the one of the um, demands of the protest or the protesters that we saw was the immediate release of all the people that were held in illegal detention by the operations or the operatives of staff across the the, 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 the state in the state, for example. You know, illegal detention, illegal arrest, uh, illegal prosecutions. Now, you see, when we're talking about uh, the, the, the issues of the police here, the police are part of the executive, okay? But the judiciary has a, a, a role to play in this matter. When people say NSAR, for me, I have seen well beyond this that that was the first step, was just the first step in... I, I, like you just, you know, you adequately uh, described me that I, I have a degree in political science. So for me, politics is not just uh, a phenomenon. It is actually something that you can study and break down into quantifiable units. You see, um, the very fact that SARS was the beginning of this situation, you look at it yourself, look at the hashtag. You have seen end police brutality. After, uh, 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 hashtag end SARS, hashtag end police brutality. Hashtag better governance, you know. So it goes well. The hashtag reform, you know, uh, uh, Nigeria. It goes well beyond SARS. SARS is only a symptom of where the Nigerian state and the Nigerian authority and the political elite have seen the Nigerian people as the kind of people you can slap, imprison, murder, and lock up without with, with impunity, without any redress, and the judiciary. Whether out of incapacity, whether because of uh, uh, under empowerment, you know, uh, cannot keep up with what you would consider as global best standards in human rights representation. If because of that, more people have ended up in prison, because one of the one of the demands was that everybody that was held in prison custody, police, seventy-five percent of the people held in prison custody today are awaiting trial, and some of them have been there for five, six, seven years. What is illegal? or moral justification for that. Okay. So while we do not agree with prison breaks, I do not agree with illegal, unlawful, unjustified... Detention. You know, what you would call indefinite uh, 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 detention. I've been a victim of it before. Okay. So I do not see a situation where I can totally condemn people who take the, the, their own rights because the state has abdicated in its responsibility in the social contract 
of protecting us and our human rights. I cannot see okay. how I can control who will now take those rights back into their own hands. Okay. You cannot protect me. Okay, Mr. Greg, I I'll come back to you. I think the network is a bit flawed. Twitching. Mr. Daly, uh, Faro um, my question, I think, is in three dimensions, if you can help me tie them together. Now, we have videos, though you alluded that we journalists are very clear, we know what is happening. But I want you to just assume that we don't know so that you can help us. For example, we have videos of, you know, Dangerous weapon being pelted at the Ocean State Governor. That was where Lai Mame made that statement to say that this is this kind of thing that has happened. Now, the record, the video has it that the governor was at the rally, I mean, was at the protest, was with them, even trying to address them. So could it be that this is state-sponsored to make him look as if it's a drama, I need a clarity on that. Then when you also look at Lagos State, let's leave it at the level of denial. They said they know nothing about it and their hands are clean on this issue. Have we not seen situations where political talk sometimes take up responsibility of, in quotes, they are paymasters without being asked to, and how do we make sure that this story is what you say it is? Okay. Um, here is what I'll say to you, Mr. K. I have seen one protest or the other in this country, at least I've been seeing protests for the last 35, 40 years. I first inhaled tear gas when I was in primary four, during the Alimos good thing. That was in 1977. Yeah. That was the first time I inhaled tear gas in, in this country. What happened to you is this, sir. There are no ambiguities about who did what. There are pictures. Persons were identified. I am a member of the Radical Agenda Movement in the Nigerian Bar Association. And we have submitted a petition to the Lagos State Commissioner of Police, positively identifying one of those who attacked protesters in Ikeja. Now, people can deny anything they care to deny. <laughs> Lagos State has been the estate of one man, just one single man for at least the last 21 years. Nothing happens in this state without a man. So if all of a sudden they are saying that something has happened that the man and his people know nothing about, okay, no problem. I have swallowed a whole bucket of salt. I'll take their word for it, but the evidences are there. We'll see what comes out of that. Now, as it relates to Oshun, the governor is either delusional or the punch is a lying newspaper, and it's still one of the few newspapers that I have any reason to infuse with honor and integrity in the Nigerian journalistic space. And Oyetola was quoted specifically saying that he was attacked by political talks. Very true. I am sure he's a politician. He should know who a political talk is, I imagine. He called, he was very specific as to the identity of the kind of people who attacked him. Now, I can't see what happened in, in Ogun State, I'm sorry, in Oshun State, but I can quote the governor. I, did, I don't know what happened in Pini, but we all saw what happened in Lagos, and we've seen Abuja repeatedly. So let's just not even, there is no need to argue on, on disputed facts. They can dispute it, that's fine. I can tell you, for instance, that I'm a Chinese man, you don't have to believe me. But at least any rational person should be able to tell who is telling the lie. Me that I say I'm a Chinese man, and you that is pointing out the fact that I'm obviously, very obviously, an African. So when the government comes out to deny evidences that should be clear as day to any objective observer, you know, that's fine. I'm happy they are denying it, but it does not make it true because they simply denied it. Now, if that does not make, if their denier does not render a lie the truth, then the fact remains that somebody has been attacking the protesters, and I am assuring you that those are not the protesters attacking themselves. It doesn't make sense. So when you now speak in relation to the violence going on, let me be clear. We have seen the Nigerian government play this game so many times, it's unbelievable. When the people appear to have found some unity amongst themselves, it is always the Nigerian state and its rulers who bring the divisions that are engineered to ensure that the solidarity is broken. 
this time around, it is as clear as day. These people are two together. Let's find a way to divide them. The easiest way to legitimize the use of violence against a man is to ascribe violence to him. It is not by accident that me, I'm a pacifist. I have been one all my life because I've always been the tiniest in my classes. What good does it make if me, who was 10 years old in Form 1, picks a fight with a 15-year-old boy who are, the, who are the people I went to school with? So I learned not to fight. I would rather talk. And that is what founded my non-violent stand. And I'm telling you, the protesters have nothing to gain by the deployment of violence. It is the Nigerian state that has always embraced violence mm. as the first line of action because it is in the embrace of violence that it legitimizes its refusal to treat the subjects as citizens. Okay. These people have not at any point embraced violence. What you are saying on our streets are state-sponsored violence designed to legitimize the use of force against harmless, non-violent protesters. Okay. It has a consequence. Okay. It Mr. has a consequence. Mr. I'll hold on to that. Don't worry. I, I have you for a full day today. So I will come back to you to actually look at these issues and provide solutions because I'm sure you have loads of them on how to move forward with this um, agitation. Back to you, Mr. Greg. I, 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 I like to get something clear, and um, that's where I think we're looking at. Several people have come up with different suggestions. Let the president address the youth. Let us um, have timeline to this um, way to address some of the things they promised. The police, as we speak, said they've started training for the SWAT, uh, members of SWAT. What exactly do you think is the way forward? Hmm. There is no one simple bullet that will solve all, there's no one simple solution that will solve everything. And my brother spoke about the Nigerian state. I can tell him authoritatively that there's no such single body as the Nigerian state. If he looks carefully, he will find out that the government of Nigeria, the sub-national government of Nigeria, are probably almost equally divided now amongst political, different political parties. And that they have their own agenda. And nobody can say, for example, that the government of Edo State is, is behind state, that is behind state sponsored violence. The government, I'm not, I don't, I'm not intending to uh, defend Edo State government or to defend any particular political party. I want us to look at the reality, the facts on the ground. For example, I know that the government of Lagos State, which is an APC government, has already instituted a judicial panel of inquiry into all the extrajudicial deaths and all the excesses of the power of uh, uh, FSA. You know, though FSA is a federal body operating within the state uh, 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 constituency, the same thing in Edo State. Edo State today has been constituted a judicial panel of inquiry into all the deaths of all the people pre uh, preceding the, the protest, during the protest, and so on and so forth. The origins of the protest, the funding, and all that. So looking at it on the surface, and my brother will agree with me that as a lawyer, all you can do is deal with the evidence and not uh, pour fuel on the fire with emotional and sentimental uh, suppositions. In, the Nigerian state is not a, a, what you call, a ubiquitous or a complete uniform block. They are contending issues, even within the ruling party itself. I'm saying this because it is what, that, that's my area of speciality. That even within the ruling party, they are contending uh, uh, philosophies and ideologies as whether we should be radical, whether we should be conservative, or whether we should be liberal, middle of the world. So it's wrong to say that the Nigerian state or the government is a uniform, it's a blanket statement, it's general, and it doesn't apply. Okay, now, let's go further. What do we need to do? And one of the things that is obvious is that the central control of law and order has become totally uh, antiquated. 
It's not working. You cannot control law and order from Abuja. Neither can you control the law and order of Edo State from Benin City. You have to allow from Abuja, Edo State, with the governor, let him be responsible for the security law and order of Edo State. Let the local government chairman be responsible for the law and order in the local government. That's how it is done in the democracy that we're copying. Okay. In America, our county police, you have state police, then you have national police, FBI, you know, and then you have uh, the uh, uh, national guard, and then you, you know. So let us now, if we want to, if we want to eat the frog, let's eat the eggs with the frog. If we want Western-style liberal democracy, as uh, as uh, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, escalated by the American system, let us now accept county police, which is local okay. government police. You know, we have vigilante at local government uh, uh, area. Let us formalize them, give them uniforms, give them tags, give them rank. Let people, let the youth in those local government be what? Let them grow up wanting to be community or local government enforcement agents or whatever you call them. At state level, let us have state police controlled by the governor, you know, and let them over, 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 I mean, over, 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 and over our local government police. Okay. Then let us now also have federal police, which already exists. Like this. Let them monitor both state and local government police. Okay. Let them watch out for corruption at local government level, watch out for corruption at state level, and watch out for corruption. If you even have what you call the special monitoring units within the police that watches out for corruption amongst all those units. So that is, that's where we have to go. In order okay. to do that, we have to make sure that Okay. All those units are funded. In order to do that, we have to make sure that revenue derivation and revenue allocation must be federalized. We must follow our constitution. Okay. If we are a federal nation, if we are a federal uh, 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 country, if we are a federation, then local government, states, like local government already have uh, uh, autonomy, so to speak, in uh, revenue uh, allocation. Okay. But not in revenue. Okay. Oh, Greg, I, I, I'm happy that you started this conversation on the way forward, uh, but quite a lot to discuss when we are talking about the way forward because I know two of you are seriously interested in making sure that the aim of this protest is achieved. But we'll do that. by We'll take a short break, and when we come back, we'll be looking at providing answers to many questions that have been raised by the protest. Please don't go anywhere. We'll be back after the break.